Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome to the Mental Wellness Wake Up Show, a weekly podcast where growth minded, creative people come to learn best practices from both spirituality and psychology that create lasting well being. I am your host, mental wellness expert, improvised acting teacher, therapist, and coach, Dawn McMillan. Let's get to it. Hey, beautiful humans. I'm actually sick in bed. Ay, ay, ay. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for listening because you don't have to. And yet, here you are sharing your time with me, sharing your attention. And we all know that our attention is one of our most precious commodities. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I also want to acknowledge that it's possible, if you read the news, to feel pretty despairing right now. So I want to give you kind of a little verbal hug and remind you that at any given moment, most people are okay. And at any given moment, most people are just doing the best they can. So redirect your attention to what is good, what is working, what is joyful. And I'm not talking about spiritual bypassing or not being willing to bear witness. I'm really talking about, about shifting some of the balance of your attention away from what is wrong to what is right and away from what you don't want to what you would like to create. So that's just a brief invitation to all of us to remember that we can't always control the world, but we can control where we choose to put our attention. And the things that we attend to tend to increase. So what I want to increase today is the concept of Wu Wei or Wei Wu Wei which comes from the Taoist philosophy of ancient China. So we've touched on Taoism in the past. I shared an episode talking about the Tao of Pooh based on Winnie the Pooh and shared a little bit of reading from the Tao Te Ching, which is the seminal piece of work <laughs> on Taoism, at least the one that most of us in the West have heard of. And um, just how some of those concepts can be a little bit brain frying, you know, it's the, it's being and nothingness. It's what is and what isn't. It's emptiness and fullness. I think so much of what, what uh, is transcendent also transcends language. But nevertheless, we're going to dive in because I think it's a beautiful, beautiful philosophy. And I personally, um, need a reminder. Sidebar. I think so often the reason we don't change more is simply that we forget our habits, our programming takes over. And especially if we are seeking change in a way that is countercultural, if we are uh, running away from ego attachments, from look at me, from if we are moving towards more holistic ways of being, collaboration instead of competition, um, naturalness instead of, um, I want to say putting on a front, but I'm not sure that that's the best way to say it. But so often I think we don't change in the direction of our desires just because we forget, we get distracted and then we have to do it again. At least I know that's true for me. So part of my my intention in, in revisiting Taoism in Wu Wei or Wei Wu Wei is because I need it. I've gotten very caught up in pushing, in grinding, in forcing, in trying to make things happen. And it never goes well for me, so I don't know why I keep buying it. You know, it is the, the, the common cultural narrative, at least in the United States, of America in the 21st century, which is where I am. Um, But our ancient Chinese philosophers would tell us that there is another way. 
So let's talk a little bit about the historical context. So um, as we mentioned, it's deeply rooted, the concept of Wei Wu Wei, or Wu Wei, in the teachings of Lao Tzu and the Tao Te Ching. And it literally translates as action without action, or my favorite way of describing it, effortless doing. Greg McEwen, who wrote Essentialism, had a new book out called Effortless. And I was uh, digging into that a little bit as I was thinking about this concept of Wei Wu Wei. And one of, one of the points that he makes is about gratitude. So you may be asking yourself, what does gratitude have to do with effortless doing? So much, so much, so much of what we experience as obstacles really is internal resistance. And when we are able to shift our attention towards radical gratitude, right? Not just gratitude for the things that we like, but gratitude for the things that mm, we may not have chosen for ourselves, but exist nonetheless. He shares about how he made a rule in his family that if anyone complains, they have to immediately follow up with a gratitude. And I think it's great too that I I think they started plussing up the game to where each complaint had to be followed with three gratitudes. And if you talk to a lot of different uh, philosophers, spiritual philosophers and psychologists about if you could give people one tool to transform their lives, to get them out of their mood disorders, out of anxiety, out of depression, what tool would they share? And it's, it's gratitude. It's gratitude. And not in the way of like, I thank you for, I'm really grateful and thankful for my health. And I'm grateful that I have hot and cold indoor plumbing and running water, blah, blah, blah. But really getting in touch with that sense of, wow, how amazing is it to be alive? How great is it to have comfortable pillows, right? Like I'm sick in bed. I have a bed. I'm not, and you know, and if I wanted to plus up my gratitude, right? I'd be grateful for being sick because there's something beautiful in everything. So effortless is a sort of modern British guys <laughs> take on a Wu Wei. And it all kind of ties together. So if we're talking about effortless doing, it's about aligning with the natural flow of life. Gratitude prevents you from being in resistance to what is. What is already is. You can't change what is. So being upset about what is only causes you suffering. Radically accepting what is, so radically accepting what is that you are grateful for it, opens up a path toward creating what will be. Action without action, effortless doing, aligning with the natural flow of life. So at its core, Wei Wu Wei embodies the belief that you can achieve the most by doing the least. It's, it's the idea of rowing downstream. Like why row upstream? Just to prove how hard you can work? What if you can arrange your life so you're rowing downstream? What if you can put roller skates on when you're at the top of the hill so you go down quickly and easily? We're advocating the idea of harmonizing with the spontaneous rhythm of the universe rather than trying to impose your will on external circumstances. So it's about coming from a space of inner tranquility and attunement and allowing life to unfold fold without resistance or force. It's accepting what is without aligning, agreeing, resisting, or reacting. It's non-attachment. It's all barking up the same tree. The Buddhists would talk to you about non-attachment. The Taoists would talk to you about effortless doing. It's all about not getting into resistance. And when we are in effortless action, when we relinquish our attachment to outcomes and instead focus on the process in a space of gratitude, we can alleviate our stress, we enhance our creativity, we foster a deeper sense of inner peace. 
So a lot of times when we start talking about path of least resistance, effortless action, uh, someone might tell you you're lazy, as a former romantic partner once told me. <laughs> People can say you're lazy or that you're going to be passive or indifferent, like you're just going to sort of float along and not take any action. But it's not that. It's not inaction. It's effortless action. It's not not engaging or taking responsibility. It's about being serene and fully present and mindful and intentional and non-attached. It's surrendering the ego's need for control. And when we do that, we're just so much more available to, to wisdom, to, to flow, as Mihai Jigchet Mihai would talk about, that flow state where time seems to pass without your conscious awareness and you lose yourself in the task. That's way wu wei. So, so what? <laughs> As we're going through the day and we begin to feel that constriction, that tightness, that force, that resistance to, I don't like this, whatever form it may show up in, is there a way to embrace the art of effortless action? Is there a way to approach the moment mindfully with a sense of harmonious balance? without resistance. And I always worry when talking about things like, I don't know, Taoism, that it can feel like a word salad. And if we're open to just kind of grokking it in fullness with our right brain or our hearts instead of our left logical brain, which you know, is a hammer and makes everything look like a nail, but there are other tools. If we can just allow it to seep in, it can be really amazing. So I wish you gratitude, ease, effortless doing, harmony, and flow. You know why? Because you deserve it. Because you beloved human, our whole perfect and complete just the way you are, and you are worthy and deserving of all the things. Until next time. I am so honored that you share time with me. If you've listened this far, then something here was of value to you. Would you please be a friend of the podcast and share it with at least one other person? The podcast is available on most platforms, including YouTube, and I need your help to get the word out. So please like, subscribe, and share, and a five-star review on iTunes would be mwah, chef's kiss. Thank you so much. See you next time.